Bold predictions, a tradition unlike any other in college football, at least, rolls on for chapter 22 tonight. And the first one caught my eye, so I want to lead with this one about the one of five. Bold prediction number one, and for those of you unfamiliar, these are just things you're predicting that you claim you'd bet your money on. How about this one from Columbia, South Carolina? Only one of the preseason top five teams will make the college football playoff. Now, I look to my left, I look to my right, I don't see an AP poll yet. I have not dropped a JP poll yet. So all we can do is go on the Caesar Sportsbook top five right now in terms of odds. And that is Georgia, Bama, Ohio State, Michigan, and LSU. I'm pretty sure that's what the other polls will look like. So the prediction is only one of those five make the playoff. This is a nine on the boldness scale for me. There is a way that this could happen, kind of. So think about this. If you told me nothing more than uh, Bama, you can pick any of the SEC teams. So, so let's say Georgia uh, goes to Atlanta and they face a beaten up Bama or a beaten up LSU. Either of them already have at least one loss, but the, you know, the one loss team makes it to Atlanta and Georgia beats them. Georgia may very well be your only SEC team. You could paint that scenario with LSU and Alabama too. So let's just for the sake of argument say Georgia's the one SEC team. Well, I just took out three of the top five. Okay, so I got one, and now I got to figure out how neither Ohio State nor Michigan is going to make the playoff. And you could say, well, Josh, it just sounds like Penn State won the conference. Yeah, okay, but even if that were to happen, and I've got multiple playoff spots left, are, are we looking at a situation where Penn State won the Big Ten and there's enough distance between them and the rest of the field that none of the rest of the Big Ten qualifies for the playoff? That's what's tough for me. That's why I'm calling this a nine. Also, it could very well be that like three of them or more make the playoff. So that one was tough to see. Not impossible, but tough to see for me. Next up, I don't know if I've told you, but I've talked to some coaches today. We sat down with Mike Loxley as well from Maryland. So this comes from Savannah, Georgia. I love the name of that town, by the way. Maryland, top 20 by the end of the year. Wow. Well, I should let you know. Mike Loxley has been the head coach at Maryland multiple years. One of the most fun guys in the sport to talk to, by the way. And he has a story. And we can't tell it in 10 minutes, which is how long we had to sit down with him. Mike Loxley, this year, for the first time, was bold enough to come in here and start talking about competing for the actual Big Ten East, competing for the Big Ten Championship. And he, he actually said, I've never said that before. You know, anyone who pays attention to me year to year, I've never used that kind of nomenclature. $5 in the uh, verbiage jar there. I've never used that kind of phrasing. I am this year because I feel good enough about that. He's another coach, by the way, who came here and talked a lot about a player-led team. Now, I, I mention that to you guys sometimes in passing, but all that means is I got a veteran-laden team. Most of the time, that's what that means. And it means I got a team who has taken accountability to the point where the coaches don't really have to be on players every second of every day. They care about the outcome. They're invested. They got skin in the game to the point where it's their team. You know, we're kind of keeping it on the rails, but it's their team. And they will determine how far they go, which is a beautiful thing when it works out. It's a nightmare when it doesn't. Maryland top 20 by the end of the year, though. That's an 8.75 on the boldness scale. S&P Plus, they're starting the season at 41st. They've gone 3-9, and 2-3 and three the COVID year, 7-6, and 8-5. and five. So there's a noticeable progression there post-COVID. If I could get them to 9-3 and three this year, that's probably good enough for a top-20 finish. Here's the problem. Uh, they go at Michigan State, at Ohio State. Illinois will be a dogfight at home even. Uh, Penn State, at Nebraska, Michigan. They, I don't know about spreads on some of those. They're a point spread underdog in most of those games, though. And so I need some upsets. I either need some upsets or I need I need some losses and like a monumental upset against Ohio State or, or Michigan. It's his best team, though. I think it'll be Mike Loxley's best team. So this is not out of the realm. And they said top 20, not top 10. So I'm going to go 8.75 on that boldness scale. What about this one? There's some layers to this next one. And this one has some G5 flavor to it. Tulane goes undefeated but does not make the college football playoff. Huh. Now, we saw this a couple of years ago. The cannot crowd turned into the has not crowd when they told you that Cincinnati G5 team couldn't make the playoff. Then all of a sudden they made the playoff. We held strong on our show, by the way. So Tulane goes undefeated this year and they don't make it. Well, I'll tell you a couple of things here. 
Firstly, it's hard to go undefeated, so I'm going to make this a 9.5 on the boldness scale, although they have the best odds of any G5 team to do it. Secondly, look at Ole Miss in week two. They come to Tulane. That's it. There is no more Power 5 team, which leads me to my next point. A lot of hypocrisy in this sport. Couldn't be us, but a lot of hypocrisy in this sport. Some of that hypocrisy sounds like this. You heard it earlier in the show. All the SEC should play nine conference games. Why? Well, their schedule is not strong enough. Some of those same people would look at Tulane go undefeated, and they would say, well, they deserve a shot at the playoff. And I'd ask them, why? Well, they went undefeated. Okay, and? Well, you are what your record says you are. Like, How could you deny an undefeated team a shot at the college football playoff? I don't think their strength of schedule warrants it. That, that's my very cold, serial killerish, heartbeat not above 80 response to that because we've had to do this before. And I'd probably have the same conversation. I would, I would tell you, I don't care that you're undefeated alone. I do care about it. But I also care that I think I would favor 15 teams in the country to go undefeated against your schedule. Some years that's the way it works out. We'll have to see how this works out for Tulane. Uh, so there, there may very well be a scenario where they go undefeated, and I'm sitting here like I was with Cincinnati two years ago saying, no, I think they deserve to be in the playoff, but it would be out of Tulane's hands because that's the card you draw when you're a G5 team. My answer has been have a G5 playoff. No one wants to do it. And so in lieu of that, if we're going to continue the charade that 130-some-odd teams actually play the same caliber of this sport – then I'm going to be a little bit more of a stickler about strength of schedule. And let's be consistent, by the way, across the board in how we talk about that. So I think it'd be tough for him to go undefeated. And then going undefeated not making the playoff is tough, so I'm going to make it 9.5. Lastly, and the boldest prediction of the night, and he's been in the news for other reasons today, but from Dallas, Texas, we got a prediction that said, Deion Sanders will be on the hot seat after year one. What? How? And we're removing scandal from this, okay? So if scandal breaks out, totally different thing. But if it's just for football, Deion Sanders on the hot seat after year one, dude, they could, they could go winless and only regress by one game from last year. I think we've forgotten because of how much he's been in the news, how much hype he's gotten. We've contributed to it. Maybe people have forgotten where this program is. They just had to take over 70 kids out of the portal. Or they had a roster turnover of that much. Uh, they were a one-win team last year. Whomst ever has the audacity to talk hot seat with Deion Sanders after year one, if it's just for football-related reasons, probably does not need to be featured in bold predictions very much moving forward. I'm making that a 9.75, and if you remove scandal from the equation, because anything could happen off the field. So if we're saying he's on the hot seat for football reasons after year one, that's, that's close enough to make, make that a 10 on the boldness scale. Don't see that at all. 